I'm very excited to be talking about a topic that I love, and that is Kerberos with reporting services trying to get the Power BI reports to work in a distributed environment. That's coming up. What's up guys, I'm Adam Saxton, AKA Guy in a Cube, and today we're gonna to take a look at how do you actually set up reporting services to use those new Power BI reports in the technical preview in a distributed environment. So analysis services is not on the same machine as the report server itself. Before we get into the actual Kerberos configuration, I wanna show you something that you can do to actually set up the data source where you don't need to worry about Kerberos. So this may be helpful for you if you don't want the headache of dealing with the three-headed dog. So let's take a look at my computer and see what we've got. So in this case, I've got a report that's already deployed to my report server. What you can do here is you can actually set the credentials for the data source itself. All you have to do is go to the little ellipse, go down to manage, go to data sources, and down below under credentials, we can set use the following credentials. When we select that, we're gonna enter in a username and password that has rights to that server. So in this case, I'm gonna actually use the administrator account. Put in the password. If I do test connection, that should work and we get it connected successfully. Now here's the other thing that you may want to be interested in. If you see the checkbox, log in using these credentials, but then try to impersonate the user viewing the report, what this is actually going to do is use the Gynacube administrator to connect to analysis services initially, and then it's going to put whatever user is viewing this report, it's going to pump that into the effective username field. So this gets you around the Kerberos piece, but still allows you to impersonate the user that's actually viewing the report. So you're not using a static credential. This is very similar to how the Power BI gateway connects to analysis services. And so that's an option for you if you don't want to set up the Kerberos piece. Now, for those of you that want to set up the Kerberos piece and you just want to use that user's credentials and not have to worry about anything, let's go back. We'll, we'll cancel out of this. We're not going to set that up. So the first thing we have to do is configure our service principal names or our SPNs. That's, we have to do that. Now we'll go down the line. We got to look at the report server and we got to look at the analysis services server. Let's start with the reporting services first. We need to figure out what the service account name is going to be. So let's go over to our report server and we'll pull up reporting services configuration manager. Go ahead and connect. If we go to the service account, you'll see that I'm using Gynacube slash RS service. That means I'm using a domain user for my service account for the server. Now we need to go figure out what SPNs are actually configured. So let's bring up PowerShell. We'll run that as an administrator. You can do this from any box. I'm doing this from the reporting services. I could do it from my client machine. I can do it from the SQL server, the RS box. It doesn't matter as long as you, you need to have domain administrator rights to do to actually set the SPN because we're actually adding a, an attribute or we're modifying an attribute on the actual domain accounts that exist. So you have to be a domain administrator. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do is see what SPNs do we have on the RS service account. So we'll do set SPN-L RS server, dash L is for list. We'll go and run that. And we'll see that we have some SPNs here, but they don't match the URL that I'm actually putting into the browser. So what I'm putting into the browser is the actual machine name in this case. So it's guy in a cube RS slash reports. My SPN has to mimic whatever I put into the URL for the browser. So in this case, we're gonna create our SPN for guy in a cube RS. So let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna do a dash A to add the SPN. And I've got HTTP slash guy in a cube RS dot guy in a cube .com. HTTP is for the service type. This covers HTTP and HTTPS. It's not to be confused with the protocol of HTTP or HTTPS. This is for the service, and that's going to be HTTP. RS.gynacube.com is the fully qualified domain name, and then I need to put in the service account or the domain account that I want to put this SPN on, and that's going to be RS service because that's the account I'm using on the for the report server itself. Go ahead and hit enter. That will add that. The other thing I like to do is I like to add the NetBIOS, the NetBIOS name SPN as well. So that's just HTTP slash guy in a cube RS. Sometimes it may end up using the NetBIOS name if it can't resolve the name from a DNS perspective. So even if you have like a blip in your DNS, that happens sometimes, 
you may get intermittent failure. So I do this just as a, you know, CYA. We're gonna make sure it works. So let's go and add that. So now the question you may have is, well, what if I'm using network service or the virtual service account or local system, something that's not a domain user? And you actually get the SPM for free. You don't have to do anything, but let me show you what that looks like. So in that case, you're gonna be in the context of the machine account. And so let's look at the machine account. And the SPN that's gonna cover the HTTP service is the host SPN. Every machine account will have a host SPN registered to it, and HTTP is covered by that, so you're okay. We've got our SPNs for reporting services set up. The SPN for HTTP is there, we're good. So now we can get, from a Kerberos perspective, we can get from the client machine to the report server through the browser. Awesome. Now we gotta worry about analysis services. So let's go look at, we need to know the machine account or, or the service account for analysis services itself. For that, we're gonna hop over to the analysis services server. We're gonna look at SQL Server Configuration Manager. And we're gonna look at our service itself. And in this case, I'm going to my tabular instance. That's the one I know I'm going to. And the service count here is gynacube slash OLAP service. So that's where our analysis services SPN has to go. Now, if it was local system, that analysis services SPN would have to be on the machine account at that point. And that is not covered by the host entry. So we would have to add that manually on the machine account if you're using something like local system. In this case, we're using the domain account. So we're gonna wanna go look at that. So let's open up PowerShell on this box. And we'll do set SPN dash L on OLAP service. And you'll see here that I've already got SPNs there. This is the MS OLAP service, the MS OLAP SVC.3 SPN. So that's the service. And then I added one for the NetBIOS name and the fully qualified domain name. And the thing that you see different here is I have colon tabular. For the analysis services SPN, you want to add the named instance if you're using a named instance, you're gonna add that after the colon. If it's a default instance, it would look like the HTTP SPN and not have anything there. There wouldn't be any colon anything. Also, another side note for the HTTP SPN, you will never have a colon there. You never put the port, so just remember that. Okay, now, because this is a named instance, there's another SPN that I need to worry about, and that is for SQL Browser, because SQL Browser is actually what tells us how to get to that named instance from a port perspective. And so in this case, SQL Browser is gonna be running under local system, or in the, sorry, local service. And so we wanna check what the machine account has for that SPN. And cube AS is the machine account. And you'll see here that I do have two MS OLAP disco.3, which is the service for the fully qualified domain name and the NetBIOS name. That's gonna cover my uh, SQL browser instance itself. And that will be on the machine account because I'm using local service for the account. Okay, so we've got our SPNs for SQL browser for analysis services. We've got our SPNs for analysis services itself, the named instance, and we've got our SPNs for the report server for the HTTP service. So now we actually, we've, we're done with SPNs at that point. Now we have to configure delegation. Delegation is something we have to do on the tools for Active Directory. In this case, we're gonna use Active Directory users and computers. To do that, we need to switch over to our domain controller. So let's go there. I've already got it up. Now, when we talk about delegation, what we're saying is that the service in question has the right to use my identity on my behalf to the service that it's trying to reach out to. In this case, it's gonna be from reporting services to analysis services. So reporting services is the middleman, so it needs to have delegation rights to analysis services. So let's look at the RS service account. So that's this guy here. If you have an SPN on the account, the delegation tab will be available. If you don't see the delegation tab, that means that you don't have an SPN on the account. You can always fake it sometimes if you're dealing with claims like you saw in on the report server, I had my slash SPN. I put a fake SPN there to enable the delegation tab itself. Okay, from a delegation tab here, the error that we see on the report server side is gonna show the following, and that gives us a clue. So let's go ahead and run that real quick. The error is very specific. It tells us that we have to configure Kerberos constrained delegation. And really what this is saying is we need to configure constrained delegation with protocol transitioning. 
and that's just what's being used under the hoods from the uh, Power BI rendering engine itself. So let's go back to our domain controller, go back to our servicing on the delegation tab. Constrained delegation means I need to choose the third option, which is trust this user for delegation to specified services only. And for protocol transitioning, we have to say use any authentication protocol. The thing you have to remember about constrained delegation is that we have to be very specific and specify the services that we're going to delegate to. So in this case, I'm gonna to have to do add. We are going to delegate from the reporting service account to analysis services. So I'm gonna put in the account name that has the SPNs that I'm interested for for analysis services. That was OLAP service. And you'll see here the NetBIOS name SPN that, we, that was on that service account. It's actually gonna take both SPNs but you're only gonna see the NetBIOS here and I'll, I'll come back to that in a second. So we wanna hit okay and you'll see just the NetBIOS there. If you hit expanded, you'll actually see both. It'll grab both of them, so that's okay. Now I need to add the SQL browser service to this as well. So let's do add, users or computers. We add the machine account for the analysis services box where SQL browser is. We hit okay. It's gonna show us a bunch of stuff because these are all the services that are covered by host and we'll also see the SQL browser piece in there too. So we gotta to scroll down to MS OLAP Disco 3. In this case, it's actually showing me the uh, FQDN. We'll go ahead and hit okay. And again, if I do expanded, we'll see all four of them listed here. So that's good. So we'll go ahead and hit okay. Everything's configured now, we're good to go. Except for one thing. We also have to make sure that the application itself is set up for, uh, to use delegation or negotiate or Kerberos. So let's go back to the report server because that's our application server. We need to verify that it is using the uh, negotiate protocol for the authentication type. So let's go to, so we'll go to where the rs report server.config file is. Under report server, we'll see rs report server.config. We'll open that with notepad and we'll go down to authentication types. In this case, all I have is RS Windows NTLM. I need to modify that and put in RS Windows Negotiate. So RS Windows Negotiate is going to allow for Kerberos or NTLM. So Negotiate's kind of like a, a gate pass. It checks to see if the SPN's there. If it is, we're gonna go curb. If it's not, we're gonna go NTLM. And so we'll save that. We now have to stop and start the service. So that changes all take effect. Nothing's cached. It's back up. Let's close our browser. Open it back up. This may or may not work. It depends on what's cached because errors get cached from a curb perspective. And so if we do get an error, we'll have to just reboot the box. When in doubt, reboot. Um, if it does work, we're good. And it ended up working. So we're good to go. Okay, what questions do you guys have? I know Kerberos can be a very confusing topic and frustrating. So let me know what you have down in the comments below and I will be more than happy to answer those. I'll also have some links down in the description to other videos and blogs that I've done about Kerberos in general to try and help you out. If you liked the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe for more great content. And as always, thank you so much for watching and keep being awesome.